to suddenly. Look at this thing. Redneck visit. In 1967, a special forces officer along with six Jeeps were parachuted in behind enemy lines. Upon landing, all six of the Jeeps broke into pieces, but he managed to put two of them back together and complete the mission. 25 years later, that same special forces officer started Tom Car, the vehicle that he'd wished he'd had and the vehicle that I'm gonna tell you about today. A lot of side-by-side -side manufacturers claim that their stuff is durable. To me, one of the only trustworthy metrics for durability in a side-by-side -side is how long it lasts as a rental. Polaris, from what I've seen, sends their units out to those rental companies for about a year before completely replacing that fleet. Tom car? My Tom car? Try 15 years in the rental industry before I ever got a hold of it. Up in Alaska, some of the most punishing terrain in the world, they've been running theirs for almost 20 years. That is simply unheard of. You don't run a vehicle beating on it like you do when you rent them out for 20 years. In my case, I was extra amazed that it was still running pretty good when I got it, especially when I unscrewed the transmission oil cap and no oil came out. Only a few grungy, slimy chunks of steel. It was still moving along and it had been roasting itself for, well, I'm really not sure how long. The rental company could have been running it like that, I guess. The point is, they can really handle abuse. Back in 05, you didn't have a bunch of sport buggies zooming all over the place, YXEs and Mavericks and KRXs. You really just had the utility stuff and maybe a Rhino or two. And so the market was a lot different back then. And Tom Car, not to be confused with a Tom truck, just wanted to test it out. They wanted to see, hey, do civilians want to buy this stuff? Because before that, they were just selling to the US Marines and people like that. So to test out the civilian market, they threw in some little Kohlers and just enough driveline meat to get the thing to move down the road. I mean, hey, it's a whole lot better than some Gator from 05. But they kept the unique aspects of a Tom car that really make it a Tom car. I mean, a very wide 70 inch stance, even on their smallest one, this TM25. And I've even heard their side hill critical angles are 60 degrees. I mean, I have never come close to feeling tippy in this thing, even when taking corners fast. I know on their TXs, they say you can take a dirt corner at 50 miles an hour, which is whoo. With the exception of the TM25, pretty much all Tom cars actually have automotive style engines and rear mounted radiators. The new 2023 Tom Car TXs have 1.5 turbo Chevy blocks in them. So I think that's about 180 pound feet of torque and 163 horsepower. So really on the torque end, what they're built for is to haul unlimited amounts of military cargo. If you look at this goofy video, they even put a razor on top of there. The cab of a Tom car is one thing that hasn't changed too awful much over the years. You have two bucket seats that can slide forward and back. You have an adjustable steering wheel, turn signals, hazards, very basic instrument cluster. You have your uh, emergency brakes that, uh, because there's just two little nuts and bolts right there, you can thread one of those in or out if you wanna have cutting brakes, it's kind of fun. Gear shifter's pretty normal, low, neutral, reverse, neutral, high. And then most of the Tom cars have this second little lever here that you push forward to lock the differential and back to unlock the differential, the rear differential that is. And on the four wheel drive stuff, their newer stuff has air lockers, but I've heard that they're gonna wanna move away from that maybe to some mechanical lockers. All Tom cars that you buy today are both a flatbed with just that front cab or a double cab with a shorter bed. You might ask how? Because they make them totally modular and the same frame can be rearranged into either the flatbed orientation or that nice five-seater orientation. It's kind of totally awesome. Another thing that hasn't really changed on Tom cars is their nice aluminum skid plate, which also leads up to 
the front bumper area, which if you watch some of the videos that Tom Cars put out about the idea behind the design up here is really a work of art with how the rocks hit it and how it can slide up and over the rocks. I won't do all that talking right now, but I'll put a link to a series of videos that Tom Carr put out about a lot of the engineering behind the choices they made in design. Tom Carr, actually for quite a while, has made an electric version of their various models. I think it only has about 120 horsepower, but hey, that's something. And you get like 100 miles of range, pretty good. Definitely a league ahead and came out long before any of the Polaris stuff. You will not find any bolts on the chassis or frame of a Tom Car. Just these nice welds and they come with a lifetime warranty. So if I was to go crack on some of these welds, I could take it back into Tom Car, Deer Valley, and they would weld it back up for me. We've covered that if you need durability, yeah, Tom Carr is the only name on the list. There is no one that could possibly match this kind of durability. Once again, that one piece welded frame, bulletproof construction all the way around, symmetric construction all the way around. I found it pretty easy to come up with parts to use that didn't necessarily belong at a dealer. You know, they don't have dealers for Tom Cars. If you go on their website and say, hey, how do I find a dealer near me that can service it? They say, no, we designed this to where Joe Schmo and their garage should be able to repair everything that they need to and they're very, very easy to get parts from. You just order it and those parts will come right to you. They will talk you through absolutely anything as far as customer service and getting those repairs done. Now, Tom Car is not the most powerful vehicle on the market. Like I mentioned earlier, it's only got 163 horsepower and 187 pound-feet of torque. That's a lot, but its curb weight is 2,700 pounds. The power to rate ratio, which really, in my opinion, isn't the most meaningful metric, is around 16.5 pounds per pony. So you're not gonna be out racing a YXE on the dunes, but it's got plenty of power, it can go plenty fast, and as far as beating it on the rocks, the Razors and the X3s will be upside down and in pieces while you're still cruising along. There is no way that they won't be flipping where you're driving. I mean, even though it doesn't have quite the same suspension travel as those rigs, and you got 14 inches with the Tom Car, <laughs> close to 30 inches with Razor Pro R's, have you ever noticed? They're kind of up high, you know? And they're kind of short this way, and that kind of makes you go <whistles> The Tom Car, you're not gonna do that. Nice and long, nice and wide, and the center of gravity is literally below your seat. Like I said earlier, 60 degree side hill, I was reading another article today. They tested it with a little forklift and they actually got 70 degree side hill angle on it. 70 degrees, people. I'm not talking about 70% gray. I'm talking about, you know, this is a 45 and this is a 70. <laughs> so basically, a stock, a stock bone stock, Tom Car is a rock crawling monster. I think they put 32s or maybe 33s on there out of the factory. The other thing that makes it a rock crawling monster is the torque numbers, right? That 180 some pound feet of torque that's great just, just as a number. That's way down at like 2,500, 3,000 RPM. So you're getting that as soon as you load up that CVT and start up the hill. The numbers that you get for like a Can-Am, right? Because Can-Ams have good torque. Yeah, I got a Can-Am right there. They're peaky, okay? They're snowmobiles. The Japanese, they're motorcycles. So you're getting your max torque up by where you're getting your max horsepower. I mean, you're getting like, uh, I think 6,000 RPM is the peak for the Kawasaki KRX and stuff. Like, I think it's 7,000 RPM. Anyways, you're not getting max torque when you start up a hill. I mean, you can overcome that with gear reduction and stuff, but you're getting the max torque as soon as you load up in a Tom car. It's kind of like being in a diesel rig. What makes the rear end of a Tom car go up when you hit the gas pedal instead of down like it should? Well, let's find out. Starting up at the back of the cab, we have these pretty standard looking coilovers that run all the way down to, woo, what's this? It's not just any old trailing arm suspension like we'd find on a Razor or Maverick or Wildcat. Not that there's anything wrong with those, but 
we have genuine portals. Just like the Germans had on their equivalent Jeeps of World War II, and just like the Hummer had. I mean, the real Hummer. What's special about these portals is that they're actually integrated into the suspension of the vehicle. If you go buy yourself a set of high lifters or GDP portals from Super ATV, then they're just straight down. They're not integrated into your suspension. They're just a bunch of unsprung mass. And there's nothing wrong with that. You get clearance and all that good stuff. But when you integrate it into your suspension and you have it set up like they do, then when your wheels go forward, when they gain traction on the ground and apply a linear force forward from right where they are, and your hinge, see right here, of your portals is above that point where the wheels exert the force forward, then really what you're doing is your wheels are trying to drive under the car, which forces the car, especially the rear end of the car, I'm calling it a car, I don't know why, this buggy up, and then you get that jolt from the rear. Now, what does that do? Well, it does transfer some of the weight forward, which gets rid of some of your traction, but it shoves your rear wheels down, which actually gives you more normal force than could be accounted for with the amount of weight that's pushing your rear end down. So it ends up being a net gain in traction ability in the rear, even though you do transfer some of the weight forward. Now, hold on a second. How does the drive get transferred from this weird looking engine to this interesting looking CVT through this tiny looking transaxle differential thing down through these little tiny spindly axles all the way to your wheels? Well, how else but a nice oil bathed chain that runs from the top of your portals all the way down to the bottom of your portals and provides a nice gear reduction along the way. Now I'm gonna do something that annoys me when I see it on YouTube, but I'm gonna do it anyways because I actually do want you to know, and that is basically read off the manufacturer's website. <clears throat> so, price. What comes with that price? What models are offered? Basically all you can get is a TX that comes in one layout that like I mentioned earlier, can be converted from a flatbed to a five seater. So the base model, base model, $45,900. Now keep in mind that this isn't like some of the American or Chinese stuff that's just gonna go when you hit something. It's not little flimsy flaps of plastic that they do so it's not too heavy and then they put a massive motor in there and everything goes snap! It's not like that, okay? This is a big block of steel. It's got an automotive engine, side by sides. High mileage, if you Google it right now, they're like, oh, anything over 5,000 miles on a side-by-side -side is high. And they're right. I mean, one reason is because it's really high abuse when you drive them. But for a vehicle that you pay a lot of money for to only last that long is lame. Tom Car, another story. 15 years later, 20 years later, chugga, 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 chugga. Still moving along. So yes, it's a disturbingly high price tag. All right, now, what do you get for that price tag? Well, like watch the whole video so far to find that out, but as far as features go, let me go to their website. Okay, base model, the $45,900. You get power steering, nice. You get the whole uh, tubular frame that you can swap between the flatbed and the five-seater. You get a receiver. You can pull 5,000 pounds behind you, 5,000 pound towing capacity. That's like automotive level towing capacity. You get a fire extinguisher, yeah. You get windshield wipers, that's kind of cool actually. And then if you upgrade and you spend another, what is that, $4,000, you're basically up to $49,900. You get a 10,000 pound winch. You get nice seats and you get a spare tire. Super funny. Uh -huh. And then you get a 40 inch LED light bar. And it's mounted on your roof, not your skid plate. Oh, I forgot about the payload. Mm -hmm. They have more payload than anybody else on the market. I mean, obviously. They have 2,700 pounds that you can chuck anywhere in the vehicle and you're fine to go. That's even more than the Can-Am Defender 6x6 DPS. Oh, and if you wanna go electric with that 120 horsepower and like 206 pound feet of torque, remember, that's crank torque, not wheel torque. They don't do fuzzy lies like a couple other manufacturers, no. 206 pound feet of torque at the crank with their electric stuff. If you want the electric stuff, you gotta dish out another 14,000 little green things. To sum it all up, if you need uncompromised durability, 
ridiculous amounts of payload capacity, and the ability to use any kind of parts to get your rig running again. If you want to be the last one cruising down the highway during the apocalypse, buy a Tom car. By the way, if there's any Tom car people watching this video, I gave you a really good plug. Maybe you could let me drive some of your vehicles. I'd be happy to do another video.